hello everybody, it's your old pal Tuna here and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are doing something that I have been very excited to try out. Like, this is a content thing, but I personally really wanted to do this particular experiment, which is that I wanted to challenge my Holbein acrylic gouache, which is my favorite type of paint to paint with, against a much more budget version of the same medium acrylic gouache. This one that I'm gonna be using is Arteza. If you are new here, hello, my name is Tuna. I'm an illustrator and comic artist from Canada. And as I mentioned, acrylic gouache is my favorite medium. I use it to paint all of these pets and otherwise things that you can see here. And I know that the Holbein acrylic wash is quite prohibitively expensive. We are talking over $10 for a little tube like this. I'm Canadian, I'm speaking in Canadian dollars. And that can get really steep, especially because a lot of the fun of acrylic wash is in the breadth of the colors that are available to collect. And this is only part of my collection. So I am a big fan of this material and I have invested a lot into it. So when it came to my attention that the brand Arteza, which is kind of like a discount school beginner art supplies brand that's very popular online because they do a lot of influencer collaborating, I was like, okay, let's give this stuff a try and see how it compares to my beloved Holbein acrylic gouache. And to put things into perspective, the entire set that I bought, which had 36 colors in it, was $55 plus tax, again, Canadian, which is like, what, $2 a tube or something like that? A fraction of the cost of the Holbein brand and I thought that the only way to do this that would be fair is if I created the exact same painting twice in both materials now just to reiterate before we get into things this is entirely a scientific experiment this is nothing nothing here is sponsored everything has been paid for with my own cash dollars and what I really want to know is can I suggest this budget material to people because when I find people ask me about what art supplies I use and I go out and I recommend them to buy this like super expensive acrylic wash I'm thinking is this person not gonna want to take a chance on this material because the buy-in cost is so high. So ideally, this Arteza acrylic gouache will be a suitable, less expensive substitute for beginners. We're about to get painting, but before we do, please like this video. I'd really appreciate it. Consider subscribing if you're interested in more art content, specifically vlogs. That's usually what I do on my channel. Now, without further ado, let's, let's jump right into it. All right, so on our left, we have the Holbein acrylic gouache, and on the right, you'll see the Arteza acrylic wash. So the way that this worked out is I created the Holbein painting first. It's actually a commission. So I have the photo reference in front of that painting that I am using to reference for the painting. And then afterwards I did the Arteza painting and I was using the Holbein painting as the reference for that. So as a result, the Arteza side ended up going a little bit faster and the Holbein, Holbein side was a little bit more back and forth of trying to decide what colors to use and what the values were. Uh, so that just, just to start things out, that's basically the process. Um, I was using an ampersand gesso board for both of these. This is my favorite material to use. It's kind of like a primed wooden panel. And I just wanted things to be even so that the only metric that was different was the paint itself. Same with the paintbrushes, using the same paintbrushes across both. So I attempted to select basically the same colors between both brands. However, the pink color on the left is more of a lilac purpley pink and the only equivalent color from the Arteza set was much more of a pinky pink. But other than that, pretty much exactly the same stuff being used. And yeah, as you can see, we're starting to lay stuff down. We're starting to see the fundamental difference between these two materials, which is that the Holbein acrylic wash is extremely opaque and wonderfully thick and easy to layer, but the Arteza acrylic wash is very, very thin by comparison. Now you can tell this right away in the actual texture of the paint itself. The acrylic wash is, the Holbein acrylic wash is supposed to be mixed with water in order to use it. And it's kind of like, it takes some practice to figure out exactly how much water to add to get the texture that you want. And I personally prefer a smooth texture that isn't really going to have any transparency. So once I hit that sweet spot, I can really easily layer dark on top of light, light on top of dark, and I don't need a lot of layers to get pretty good coverage. However, with the Arteza acrylic wash, the paint itself has a much more kind of gelatinous sort of feel to it. It's a lot more slippery and as a result, much more transparent. So you can see the paint is quite streaky. You're kind of seeing layers through layers and that's a vibe. Some people might want that from their painting materials. However, uh, the opaque and easily lay layerable nature of the acrylic wash is why I love the material so much. Now I am no paintologist. I'm not really sure what 
you need to be doing to the paint in order to call it an acrylic wash or what the binders and pigments actually are in these because I assume that's information that they don't actually have to make public. But if you were to ask me, I would kind of call these two materials almost entirely different like they handle very differently as you can see my technique is different from one side to the other I do end up with a pretty similar end result but yeah I I struggled with the Arteza to use the technique that I would normally use it didn't feel like the paint was behaving in the way that I was used to with the Holbein so that was my first very immediate observation something that I'm also noticing with the Arteza at this point is that the pigments are not as beautiful I'm finding that it does look quite a bit muddier and I'm not sure if that's from the effect of it being layered on top of itself and having kind of like a streakiness to it rather than the flat look or if maybe the pigments are just really affected differently given that the one is sort of purple and the other is sort of pink, I don't know. But I definitely prefer the vibrancy that I'm getting from the Holbein acrylic wash without question. Also, this is maybe a good time to mention that because the Holbein one was actually a commission and this was actually something that had to look really good, I was taking my time with it a little bit more and just being a little bit more careful to get the likeness to the photo and get the proportions right on the cat. Whereas in the Arteza dupe, so to speak, um, I'm not being as particular about that. And I really wasn't going into this with like an intent to prove one thing or another. Obviously, I believe that the Holbein will be superior <laughs> and that's because of my own biases, but I was trying to give a fair shake to the Arteza because I really do want to be able to find a discount acrylic wash that is comparable to what I'm used to. Something else that I was struggling with with the Arteza gouache is getting the values quite right. And it's hard to say if that was like a me problem or not, but I was noticing that the wet color versus the dry color was maybe not as intuitive as it is with the whole bime. And as well, I wonder, like, because of the nature of the Holbein being quite opaque, like, the more opaque colors are the ones that have more white in them. For example, this particular lightest lilac that you can see on the left. Um, it's very easy to mix that with the black and, like, not need a ton of the lilac with the black to adjust the value of the, the darks, if that makes sense. Whereas with the Arteza gouache, I was having to use a lot of the pink to really... Um, change the value of the darks as I was going, which was again making it kind of difficult to be raising the value um, or, or lowering it in really small increments. So kind of like getting those blendy, nice streaky blendy colors wasn't really working as well. But on the flip side, the Arteza gouache had a tendency to stay wet a little bit longer on the board itself. Um, one of the nice things about uh, acrylic wash in general is that it, it does dry very quickly. That is like kind of one of the parts about it that makes it so um, easy to use, especially for like illustrators and stuff, people who are working uh, on a smaller scale and rather fast. But if you do happen to prefer your paint staying wet so you can work with it a little bit more, then maybe the Arteza acrylic wash is more up your alley because I was a little bit able to actually blend the colors rather than having to uh, gradually change the value of the paint itself to get the blendy effect. <laughs> Again, if that makes sense. <laughs> If you've noticed in my technique so far, uh, building color on top of itself is a big part of what I'm doing. I'm kind of like layering down a base and then I'm shifting the values to kind of carve the character out a little bit as I go. This is one of the reasons why I love acrylic wash as well, is being able to layer these lights on top of darks really easily. And unfortunately, I wasn't getting quite as having as much ease with doing that with the Arteza because of the level of transparency that it has. I'm having to apply multiple, multiple layers of light color to get it to actually be as light as I want it to be. I think that the little chest tuff that I'm doing right now is actually a pretty good example of that, where on the left, you can see that I'm adding this like light, very, very pale blue, and it's just, it's, it's drying and it's staying as um, opaque and rich as it was when it went on wet. But on the right hand side with the Arteza, as it dries, it gets a lot more transparent and it loses more of that value. So I have to go back and add more layers of the white and more and more on top of itself, um, which just wastes time, frankly. And you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not here for that. I want to be zooming along and I don't want to have to be doubling back to redo areas um, 
as I'm jumping around a lot to kind of like carve the character out again, I don't want to be having to worry about having to like do a second pass on on anything that I want to like definitely be a certain value or whatever. But this is probably a good time to say, since we're kind of getting to the end of the paintings here, that the final result isn't that dissimilar from one to the other. So while the technique and the method does feel quite different, and you know, if you ask me, obviously I can very clearly tell the technical differences between the two. Like again, don't mind the <laughs> actual scale and uh, likeness differences because that's just I don't duplicate my own paintings that's not something that I do um, and so honestly like could the Arteza one pass as the Holbein one like I, I mean kind of if you weren't really paying that much attention or you weren't like someone who was really familiar with these mediums why would you notice the little differences that I do so frankly comparing one to the other in a final result kind of perspective um you know it, it does it looks fine uh, i think unfortunately the the camera's gonna do some funky stuff with the arteza side here but i think that in this background wash you can really kind of tell the difference between the transparency of the two colors and the beautiful vibrant pigmented color on the holbein side versus the kind of more washed out streaky transparent color on the arteza side which again doesn't look bad, but it does look a little bit different to me personally. And when we get some of the close-up shots in just a moment, you'll see what I mean a little bit more. And especially on these whiskers here, on the Holbein side, it's very easy for me to water the paint down to just the right amount so that I still get some nice coverage, but I can get some kind of semi-transparency on the whiskers and have a beautiful, clean line. Whereas with the Arteza side, I was having a lot more difficulty because you're not really supposed to mix it with water to to get the uh, texture that I'm going for in order to get the beautiful streaky thin lines instead they end up being a little bit blobby and that's yeah the, the last note that I'll leave you on is that I felt like I had less control with the Arteza side which does kind of give it like a cool more dreamy sort of textural oil paint kind of look in my opinion but again for my particular style, I prefer the coverage and the, the clean delineation between each brush stroke that I can achieve with the Holbein acrylic wash. But overall, do I have a problem with the acrylic gouache from Arteza? Well, yeah, I probably wouldn't use it again personally, but it's because I have a lot of very perfectly good acrylic gouache to use. And I'm glad that I bought it to try it out. I think it was a really interesting experiment. Second of all, just to like, repaint my own painting and see what it would do <laughs> but first of all so that I could really really accurately compare these two mediums to show you guys exactly where the differences are and let you form your own opinion about whether or not you want to go with Holbein or Arteza. I did it. I made two paintings. <laughs> I really hope that this video was interesting to you, that you were able to learn something new about a material maybe that you don't know very well or that you have tried before. And I'm not here to tell anybody what to think or what they should buy, but I'm just here to give my unbiased opinion about these materials, how they fare against each other. But of course, this is my video, so I am going to leave you with my opinion. On top of everything we've already talked about, should you buy Arteza acrylic gouache if you want to start getting into acrylic gouache painting. I'm going to be honest with you, no. If you feel like you want this material to maybe be something that you take quite seriously in your practice, I think you're going to be frustrated with what you see in this budget art supply. It just doesn't have the kind of control that makes acrylic gouache so difficult to master, but so satisfying to use. If you're just a hobbyist, if you really just want to give this material a try, it's it's not going to hurt you. Definitely jump into that. But I really think that if you want to get into acrylic gouache, start saving, budget for just a few colors. You can do a lot with primary colors, white and black. And you can do what I did, which is grow your collection over time. Start with that primary set and then buy one color here and there until you end up with Oh my god, how many do I have? I don't have every single color for the record because I can't buy the full set because I have so many of the colors. I need to individually go through and figure out which ones I don't have. But since you made it all the way to the end of the video as well, I do want to recommend an, a different <laughs> acrylic gouache brand that isn't as expensive as Holbein, but is nowhere near as cheap as Arteza, which is the Turner Colorworks brand. I actually originally tried this as a promo opportunity from an art supply store that sent me a free set. And truth be told, they're very, very close to 
the whole bind. So if you are looking for a material that is a little bit more budget friendly and almost on par with the higher end materials, maybe try Turner. But that's it, that's all I have for you in the video today. I just wanna take a moment now to thank all of my patrons that you're seeing here. Over on Patreon, I offer all kinds of interesting extra content. I have digital downloads, I have podcasts, I have sketchbook flip through tours. All of those rewards are available to all of my supporters over on Patreon in my snack pack. But if you do want extra goodies, I do mailable rewards as well. At the 10 and the $25 tier, I send out stickers, prints, basically whatever I feel like making from month to month, which is very fun. Thank you to my patrons for letting me run my business this way. <laughs> you also get a shout out here in my video credits and we have a discord that's pretty sleepy and pretty chill but if you want to pop over there as a snack pack member you can do that as well now i know we can't support every creator that we like online so i just want to thank you for being here and making it to the end of the video even that means so much to me be sure to subscribe be sure to like leave a comment that really helps and watch more watch more when stuff pops up keep watching because that's really good for the algorithm too stay sparkly don't let the cruel world dull your shine and i will see you guys next time and for full disclosure, now that you've made it to the actual very end of the video, this was the first painting that I did with the Arteza gouache because I received it in the mail and immediately was like, I have to use this. And so I created this tiny little guy and going into the review, I already had some, you know, ideas as to how it was going to work out on the full scale, but come on, look how cute he is. Look how cute he is.